Okay, I've had an engine out. I can't restart. I'm coming in the side of this field, landing on that football pitch there. Trims are in. Oh, am I going to make the field now? Okay, nil wind, wet wing. Let's go. Then. Thank you. Took a few tries to get the engine started then. Jake ended up doing it for me. Quite a long takeoff. There's hardly any wind at all. Engine out. Nice fast landing. Slippery grass. It's angled in the helmet. Okay, just had an engine out. I believe due to just a, a motor that wasn't properly warmed up. I thought I'd restart it in the air but I was too low to uh, have the opportunity. I sort of reached for the cable, I reached for the pull starter and then thought better of it. Oh, hot and sweaty on the ground. Jake and Lee. Not met Lee before. Oh no, I have met Lee before briefly at the ball. Uh, Jake was one of these guys who got in touch, asked me if I wanted to go fly with him over in his yard, which is a sort of Ely area of the UK, the fence here. Smells like farmland. Clean morning farmland. Water crossing. Lee just clipping it down there. And a kangook. First one I've seen, I think. Oh, I don't want to let it go to tick over just in case it dies again. Certainly a lovely morning. Lee is getting ready to go. Here he goes. Pull it, pull it, pull it. He 
beautiful stuff. Oh, I lose wake. Just jake to get up now. I've driven uh, about an hour and 20 minutes away from my patch over to here. The plan is to leave from here and uh, fly up to Winglands, about 30 miles I think. These guys have got some fuel sort of pre-staged up there. Uh, fly up there, have some lunch, meet some people, should be busy I'm told. Fly back again. Won't get to meet young Dan, because he's had a bad burger or something, but uh, should be a bunch of others there. Come on Jake, what are you doing man? Checking his wing, he's good to go, we're on it, let's do it, go.
So after this we did a bit of ground handling, uh, we did a bit of towing for fun, Jake had some rope, so we all got a pull. I think that that was Brad's first time in the air. Uh, he really enjoyed that. And it was nice to uh, nice to mess around on that. And then the wind was still pretty strong, and I thought, right, I need to get these reverses sorted. You know, I've never had to do one. Uh, I've not done one since training. Uh, I was struggling to do it on this field, just ground handling. So I, uh, Jake knows his stuff with the reverse, and he's very good at it. So I said, right, can you teach me? You know, we've got in an hour. In an hour, I want to be doing a nice clean reverse and launch. He's like, yeah, no worries. So we get set up, get all set up to do that, and uh, the wind just picked up. It was just too strong, and I had like one or two tries to pull the wing up, and then it just dragged me. In fact, when I wasn't looking, it just dragged me, and that was it. Throttle on the floor, unclipped, risers thrown down, just instant grump. And that was about it for that day. Yeah, I always chicken out of reverses. It's been a couple of times I should have done it. Um, up in Yorkshire, one ended in disaster. And uh, yeah, another time I tried down at my field, tried a couple of times, didn't get it. Packed up and went home, so something I need to get sorted. And I will, I will. So a few days later, I went over there again. We went to a different field this time. This one we just launched from. Uh, I thought I, I, the only reason I was over there was to get reverses nailed. But in the event, it was too strong then too. The wind was like 10, gusting 21 or something. Uh, and it was all over the place, very variable, very, very variable. Um, Jake had tied some big ears into the wing, just like tied knots in the A-line so that it was permanent big ears. And it was still dragging me across the field. And Jake's a bigger guy, it was dragging him too. So. We, uh, we just packed it away, played with the power kites for a bit, and then uh, went home. And that was it, that was my whole 2019 reversing saga so far this year. So we wait for another chance. I've got one up there, and I've got Jake above and behind me, getting me some sweet footage. These guys have both got speed bars, but they don't seem to be using them yet. It doesn't look like Lee has got his on. A thousand feet, chapping along above the fence. Beautiful. So, yeah, this area is the fence. It is a massive flat area of England. It, it was all, like, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, it was all marshlands. And uh, over those few hundred years, there have been many efforts to drain it. And, um, you know, back before the Romans and the Romans, with systems of like rivers and dikes and waterways being connected and allowed to drain. Uh, right up to, then they use steam engines, steam engines to pump water constantly and now today there's like like 300 electrical pumps. Look at that dude over there. He's loving it. 300 electrical pumps uh, draining water from here. There he goes pushing his bar. Yeah, quite a lot more speed there. Quite a lot more speed. I'm fully trimmed out. Yeah, I shall be attaching my speed bar at some point. So as they work to drain this land, it all sits on uh, like peat, peat bogs, I think. Well, maybe not bogs, but peat. Uh, and as the peat dried out, it shrank, and the whole land level dropped. So some of it is now below sea level, uh, and it's all protected. All the way across it, you see these uh, drainage ditches. They're all dead straight. Ah, this thing we can see here, if you look at it on a map, it's like a giant scar across the, the landscape. So it must just be a big floodplain. I think there's a river either side of this, man-made rivers. Uh, one's called the Old Bedford River and one's called the New Bedford River, I think. I'm just shocked at that acceleration with his speed bar. Need to do that. Speed bar touches here, pulls on this, pulls this uh, pulley, goes on this pulley. Scary. Yeah, 
that's amazing, especially at this pace. That is not deep water. So I'm not going to keep talking for another 35 minutes. I'll just get some sights and I'll see you over at Winglands. Let's do it. Jake, not confident in his uh, nil win forwards. There's no point in having runway behind you. on the ground there, there's a bunch, it's like a flying almost. 
uh, really nice considering that a lot of my stuff is flying alone. Met Sam Smith, linked to his stuff up here or here, here, I don't know, can't remember. Uh, Paramotor videos with some good old English humour in them. So like on the way over there's this what appears to be a massive wall of where the visibility stops. It's like, uh, it's like being in a computer game, in the fog of war. This life is only rendering out to three miles. So this big chunk of airspace on my right here is um, an air weapons range. So uh, military, bombing, strafing. Not active on weekends apparently. So nothing to worry about. So this is the first time I've flown near the coast, I think. Yeah, I guess the closest would have been the boar in Wales. I don't know if you can see it, but there's four paramotors there descending. It's also the first time I've had engine outs. Two today. One I was too low to restart. And the other one I had plenty of time to restart, and it restarted fine. So I think I need to adjust the tick over. Maybe it's come loose. It's just a screw with a spring on it. If I go to tick over now, there's every chance that it dies. Yeah, it's died. So let's go for a restart. Don't do this to me. Come on, baby.
Okay, we're all in. Leaving Wingland. I think August is reversible. A lull is forward. So we'll be going for a forward. Especially in front of all these people. The wind's picked up while we've been here. So we're going to get off before it gets much worse. We're looking at an hour plus flight back. This is a nice lull in the wind. I should take advantage. Uh, it doesn't seem as keen. Oh, I was just going to say it doesn't seem as keen to cut out. You b****. Okay, I've had an engine out, I can't restart. I'm coming in the side of this field, landing on that football pitch there. Don't know why it won't start. to wind. Send over this field. Plenty of room on there. Make the field now. I think so. Yeah. Put a little turn in. Not bad landing, put that down. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Let's ring Jake. First emergency landing, landed out, landed safe. I'm in a football field, there's a game on over there. Uh, I was all set up ready to try and launch again. But the problem is, I'll show you if I can turn this camera around. So in here, focus, carburetor, air intake, and this rubber tube has split, I can see inside there. Uh, so no amount of trying to restart it is going to restart it because it's just sucking in too much air. 
instead of fuel air mixture from the carb. So I phoned Jake, he's about 15 minutes out from the landing, he's going to come and pick me up. Uh, there are spare ones of these knocking around, I've got a friend who's got one spare that he doesn't need anymore. So get that back on and we should be all good. But meanwhile it's the walk of shame to the edge of the field over there and wait by the road for someone to come and rescue me. But there you go, first engine out, land out, got it down all right. I was plenty high enough, I was at about 2,000 feet. Um, tried to restart for ages, couldn't work out why it wouldn't restart. But uh, that was why, bloody great hole in it. So I'm just glad it's not anything serious uh, and it's just replaced that bit of rubber and we should be good. Meanwhile, i try and find a shop. I'll uh, talk to you later. This is me. Football match going on over there, and then just here is the pile of shame. Uh, Jake should be landing about now. It's about a 35 40 minute drive for him to get here. Oh, it's a lot better when you make it where you're going. So what you need for an engine out in the pouches on your motor is a, a wing bag. You know, one of those pumpkins that you can get from Tony in America. I just so happen to have some on the way. And I've got three or four spare if anybody wants one. A little wing bag which you can stick in there. And for me, a 10 mil Allen key, or Allen wrench, for um, getting the prop off to fit in someone else's car. Thanks for coming to pick me up. <laughs>